What's going on YouTube? Welcome to another portrait painting tutorial. It's been a while since we've done a, a human portrait in a while. We've done a bunch of um, animal portraits and a landscape and it's nice to be back to portraiture. So today we are going to do a little sketch. So I'm toning the canvas with uh, black and red with a little bit of white. So it's got a little bit of a violet hue to it. And I used uh, odorless mineral spirits 50-50 odorless mineral spirits and um, spike lavender uh, and I use Gamsol. All of the materials by the way are linked in the description box of the video. Hey Andrea, all the materials are linked in the description box of the video so if you're interested in purchasing the same materials I have uh, please check out the description box of the video. So what direction are we heading in? This is the direction that we're heading in. Just a simple head study to emphasize the fact that simple shapes are everything, almost, almost everything. So what I mean by almost everything is that there's still more, um, more intellectual stuff that goes into it, like anatomy and perspective um, and color, but working with shapes is gonna be the majority of the thing. So on the painting here, we have already established the placement of the head relative to the canvas. This is the center line for the brow ridge or the eyes, but possibly the brow ridge. Uh, and you can see that it's turning kind of this way. And this is the center line of the head telling me that the head is in three quarters looking slightly down. So if we look at the, at the, uh, where we're heading, you can see that it's still, in that perspective so right in the very first couple minutes uh, just like any any drawing you want to have an idea of the perspective of the model's head and now I changed the light sensitivity a little bit so you can see it better in terms of colors uh, again the colors are linked in the description box of the video I'm using my uh, handheld handheld studio palette which is a new wave highland palette and um, I'm using mostly black, orange, red, and white. So this is mostly orange and black that we're throwing in for the shadows. And you see really simple shapes start to emerge here. The shapes that are uh, going to tell me the lighting uh, right away. So this is telling me there is a side plane over here that's being developed. Her nose in the, is in this position. Um, there's an angle, so the cast shadow is coming from here. So uh, these kind of shadows are pretty useful for this kind of uh, composition. So again, pretty much all shape oriented, with a little bit of um, a little bit of input from uh, perspective in the beginning. So. Um, Let's take a look here. Hey, Andrea, Christopher. What's going on, Jonas? Yep, Hugo is here. Hugo, the little puppy, who is kind of a bigger puppy now, but still a puppy. Um, so yeah, shapes are everything, almost. Now we're throwing in some accents for the eyes. Simple shapes. You can see triangles rectangles, everything in between. Now really quickly, I'm going in for the dark accents of the eyes. So this one ended up being a little bit even faster than I'm usually used to with um, portraits. But I'm utilizing an active tone, meaning that the tone that I put on the canvas is still wet which can help with the speed, but it can make controlling the paint a little bit difficult. See how, how slick that uh, eyebrow, it almost went right off into the hair. Everything is quite slick, um, but it's, it's slick and it allows you to move faster. But if you're not careful, it can also slip out of control a little bit faster as well. And um, I always recommend you do a study 
of something before you attempt a uh, bigger painting. So um, whether it be a head study like this or a smaller compositional study, which I'll probably do a smaller compositional study. I may not film it, but um, this is for a uh, studio painting that I want to do of a, a model that is uh, coming over to my studio. So I've got some, some pictures that I'm going to use and some still life props and all that stuff. Um, so quick and simple. And you can see the geometry of it all, uh, unification of these simple shapes in the beginning. You can see a very simple plane emerging here. Very simple angular shapes going this way. The angles of the eyes, the nose, and the mouth have a relation to one another. And I know I've mentioned this stuff all the time, but you see this angle here, angle here, angle here. Uh, if you consider it just shape alone, it does give you the perspective. So if you relate shapes to one another, uh, perspective is kind of given to you. Um, rather than having to go full technical perspective drawing and then shapes. So the order is really up to you. Hey, Janice. Welcome, welcome. And in all of seven minutes, now we have the, uh, the underlying architecture for where this painting is going to develop. And now you can see, uh, looking at the finished painting and where we're heading, the trajectory from one end to the other, kind of like time travel, pretty cool. Um, we can see how this translates to this. It's, it's shape-wise, it's like I'm picking up this this big block of color, I'm putting it there, and then I'm going to shape it, mold it around just like a sculpture would, or a sculptor would, a mold, a sculpture, pushing and pulling all of these shapes. And portraits are nice for this. Um, portraiture is nice for this because of the, the geometry of it. Human heads are typically like, obviously, like uh, you can think of it like egg shape. Sometimes you can think of it like a, a ball with a jaw. Some people call it um, like a, a, a ball with a jaw, like a little triangle on it. Um, very kind of squarish. Human heads are very squarish, so it makes it rather simple to push all these shapes around. The more portraits you draw, um, the more intuitive um, the placement of these shapes becomes. All right, so I'm going to ask everyone a question. Uh, wonder where everyone is today. Let's go ahead and, and uh, let's see. We've got about 10 of us here. So I guess I'll get 10 responses. So a simple question I usually begin with is, uh, where in the world are you? So I'm in Alexandria. Alexandria, Virginia. Anyone that's watching this that may be here for the first time or is watching this as a pre-recorded video, these videos are longer than um, I guess usual videos are this day, especially these days, especially like in the era of TikTok and all that stuff. So uh, a lot of stuff goes on with these videos, so I prefer to do it this way to give you a chance to talk with me ask me any questions, uh, art-related questions that you have. And um, I do this about every Tuesday around the same time, 10, 15 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. If you're wondering what that means, just look up what 10, 15 
uh, a.m. in Washington, D.C. is uh, for you. And that's the time that I will be here. Stephanie, ooh, from England. Thanks for watching from England. <laughs> Parting mist, where in the world is Carmen San Diego? You're, uh, you're in Oak, Oak, Oklahoma. Thanks for watching from Oklahoma. And skin color, you're probably wondering skin color since the palette isn't on here. Thanks for watching from uh, New York State, Janice, Western New York State. So color, you're probably wondering what on earth am I doing with the uh, skin color. And skin color tends to almost always be uh, a, a mystery for, for everyone. And as many times as I've done videos with that palette on the side, I know it's very tempting to think that what you see me do on the palette or see others do on the palette is the solution for you. Um, it's tempting to think that, but all it is is a guide. Uh, I would definitely suggest that you do experiment with color. Now for what I'm using, it's pretty simple. I'm using, um, first of all, the tone of the canvas, black, red, and white. And on top of that, we have orange, white, and then a little bit of uh, uh, ultramarine blue, orange, white, ultramarine blue, uh, to get a kind of coolish, uh, cooler skin tone. Parting miss, you wrote pink is the new gray. So, so uh, Fully confident in that color. Oh, good. Pink is the new gray. I like that. Uh, from Oscar P. Thanks for watching from Barcelona, Spain. I think I'm like 1 16th Spaniard, I think. I forgot how the math goes. Um, but cool. And Adriana, thanks for watching from Paris. Oh, well, thank you for watching, Adriana. I'm glad you enjoy the painting, painting videos. So we're going in pretty fast um, for 12 minutes and 30 seconds. This is probably the most I've ever gotten done um, in under 13 minutes. Uh, it's It was a while since I painted a, a portrait sketch like this. I usually have long-term paintings that I work on. But there's something to be said about fr being free, uh, allowing yourself to be as free as a dog roaming around and running across the field, um, but also having the training and the discipline to come back when you're, when you're, um, you know, uh, recalled, right? Um, so it's it's important to have freedom, but also control in how you work. You can see I'm deliberately moving the shapes in a specific sequence, right? Um, and in the end, I'm going to do a little uh, recap of everything that went down, but pretty much the first 13 minutes was probably the biggest stage uh, for this. As you see, we're not gonna change it that much from there. So what happened in the 13 minutes and then the remaining um, 20 minutes is gonna be pretty much just putting in small shapes and softening edges to make sure that those shapes fit together. And then that's a portrait sketch. Um, very, very efficient. So um, next question I'm gonna ask everyone. So thanks for writing down a comment. Uh, and I gotta get a little creative with these questions because um, I'm not the most creative person in the world. In case you haven't um, noticed, I've been painting portrait sketches for years on YouTube now. So you can imagine I'm not that creative. But um, let me ask you, what is your favorite, and I've asked this before, but I, the answer changes for me every time. What is your favorite tube of paint? Your favorite tube of paint? Assuming that 
most of us here are uh, are painters. So what is your favorite tube of paint? Uh, mine used to be lead tin yellow, but now that um, I moved to a apartment and use water mixable oil paints for the most part, uh, and got the puppy, I don't really have cadmiums at all. Uh, so currently my favorite color on my palette is a, um, a cobra color, um, which is called pyro. I don't know if I spelled it right. Pyro red. It's cobra. It's um, it's a primary red. I don't even. I don't know if I spelled that right. It's a primary imitation uh, of a cadmium. It's not as um, heavy as a cadmium. It's not as meaning it's not as opaque, but I'm able to use it a little bit more uh, freely, like on the nose. I remember using it, uh, and, and we'll get the palette on the side one of these days, because um, I know that's probably what you prefer. But it is kind of a transparent cadmium red lookalike, as you see there, and here, and it's cheap. It's not a very expensive color. Um, so um, I believe it or not, I've been using water mixables this whole time. Um, I thin it out with solvent. Here's the thing. Water mixable is not just for the the flashiness of being able to thin with water. It's practical. Uh, if I get it on things, which I tend to do, it's really easy to clean. Uh, my dog backed up into a wet painting. We put him in the in the bathtub and it was he was uh clean we got rid of the the paint all the black paint that he got on himself um so from ram how to use liquid uh okay so there's there's uh many reasons for it the most important would be to expedite the drying time so to speed your drying time so what you want to do is uh add a small amount to your paint. Imagine this is your paint on your palette. So add maybe like a drop of the liquid, mix it with a palette knife, put it back on your palette, and you have expedited the drying time of your paints. Um, traditionally, you add medium directly to your paints and not to your canvas. The other reason to use it is to glaze or oil out. So that means you add medium to the paint more medium than you would just adding it to a, a pile of paint and then you put it over a dry layer of paint and you use the transparency to have a um, to have a stained glass kind of effect that's what a glaze is and then oiling out uh, is just to bring back the luminosity of the uh, the painting it's kind of like a varnish but not a final varnish you just add the medium onto the canvas um, it, you, that's how you would want to use use liquid very sparingly I like to use Neo Magilp though lately I haven't been using medium at all I've just been uh, using the water mixables they don't sink in as much as um, the uh, the regular oil paints they just don't and I can't tell you if that's a good thing or a bad thing but we know that water mixable is uh, technologically I'd say more advanced than the traditional oil paint but bear in mind traditional oil paint and water mixable oil paint are the same thing the only difference is a slight modification to the linseed oil. Same thing, just modified linseed oil. Um, hey, Stephanie. You bought the water mixable oil paints yesterday. Awesome. You were using pastel paints before. Cool. And um, I've had experiences with other water mixables. Um, I mean, they're all pretty good. Um, but for the most part, I tend to like Cobra, the brand that I'm using. Um, but you can use anything that's comfortable to you. 
Um, the, the important thing I would say is not so much if it's water mixable or, or traditional, but it's just like we're talking about today, working with shapes. And you can do it with pastel, although with pastel you're mixing on the paper, which is uh, kind of a different process, but similar fundamentals. All about working with simple shapes. And we're just past the 20 minute mark. So I don't understand how I did that, but um, it's not sped up, at least to this point. This video is not sped up, um, and it won't be sped up at all. Um, we will miss a thing when it comes to softening edges, but you won't miss that much. Um, this first, These first 20 minutes were pretty vital, as you see from a distance. If you wear glasses uh, and you're nearsighted, take your glasses off, and at this point, look at your screen. Both of the images are identical, except for obviously there's a color on the top left. And, and besides that, the face. Take off your glasses if you're nearsighted. Or if you're not nearsighted, do that thing where you <laughs> move your eyes in towards your nose. Um, it's a very useful thing to do. If I were to be painting from life, if I were to be your instructor, teaching you to draw and paint from a live model, which is what I do when I teach uh, in person, like person to person, when I teach painting, I teach with a live model um, whenever I can. There's a very important thing that didn't happen here up until this stage, a very important thing that enabled me to move this uh, fluid. Hey, Lady Death. Um, it is, I didn't measure a darn thing. I threw shapes down and I reasoned with shapes freely. That's how I got to this point. Um, let's see. So from Rama, uh, how you generate income from paint. There's many ways to make money from uh, painting these days. And uh, the opportunities that exist today didn't exist 10 years ago opportunity that exists 10 years from now don't exist today but just like many things in life um, I call it the Kmart theory uh, depending on where you are you might not know what I'm talking about but um, uh, think about Kmart versus Walmart Walmart came along and I don't want to get into the, the specifics of it but uh, things evolve with technology um, and with uh, just like an evolution of things, things change. So if you keep doing things the way that you have been doing things in the past, like traditionally trying to be a painter and making the best darn paintings you can, but you don't post anything to social media or you don't have a YouTube channel or an Instagram or anything like that, it's going to be very difficult for you to, to be seen and to be able to generate income. So the best thing for you to do uh, to generate income as an artist is actually not to think about generating income as an artist. It's to focus all of your time and all of your energy that you can into developing the best skills you possibly can. Then as a separate study, as a separate discipline, study the market, what's going on with technology, and me telling you this is hypocritical because I don't have a, I don't have a TikTok, I don't do YouTube Shorts, so I'm falling behind. Um, I'm much further behind than I um, than I should be, and it's it's not purely ignorance. It's just it's uh, probably if, if anything, it's just laziness. I should be doing more things, but I'm here to tell you, uh, it is possible. You have to stick with technology you have to basically short videos on tiktok is a thing tiktok videos that's one way instagram that's another way selling your paintings online through places like etsy that's another thing youtube that's another thing um, heck i've even painted landscapes outside and and sold them 
people are just walking by just uh, a simple like hundred dollars uh, it it's happened it's possible but that route the traditional route is much harder than uh, utilizing the uh, the technology that you have today and ultimately it's a love for the art if you love painting you're going to have ups and downs if you love someone in real life and, and, and you know like someone a wife a husband um, you're going to have ups and downs you're going to have times where you just want to get away from them you're going to have times where you just want to spend every waking second and you value all of it it's um like i said it's one of those things you have a passion for it you will succeed it, it's inevitable you will succeed if you have a, a passion for it so good question rama okay so now that we're filling in the shadow shapes uh, with color the important thing here is to know that the mixture of the color is not what makes this painting work the um it just it doesn't it's all in the values so again if i do something like this okay very drastic if i do something like this well it still works it still works i wonder why that is and that's because there's this i this con this conception that um that i must always always uh, have a recipe or uh, the back of the pancake thing said the recipe is two eggs and then blah 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 uh, it, it's not you can do pretty much anything you want with color and as long as the value range works um, then that's what what matters so going back to the 20 minute mark hold on a second we're going back to the 20 minute mark so um, again I can do it that the other direction so if I go, here's what it is with the normal color. What if I do something like this? What if I turn it into a, a circus act, right? Crazy, but you still have an image of a face there. And again, let's take it back to what it's supposed to be. So that's just to show you that the value is absolutely going to be the most important thing for you to think about. I could make those colors different however I want. Now that last little filter didn't help with anything because it, it affected the values. Um, but let's go ahead and ask everyone else a question. We've got about 20 of us here. Um, oh, now 24, cool. All right, so question for everyone and uh, Feel free to answer this however you like, um, but let me ask you something. Um, what motivated you, if you could think of one instance, it could be really anything that motivated you to paint, uh, to learn to paint, what was that experience? Um, so I'm gonna have to type that out. What motivated you to paint? And um, I can tell you that what motivated me to paint, I think is, it started when I was a kid. I think um, I would, I remember drawing Dragon Ball Z characters um, when, when I was in elementary school and uh, the kids really liked it and I didn't really have many friends um, when I was a kid I wasn't a, uh, a cool kid um, but people liked it and they even bought my drawings from me when I was uh, when I was a kid at recess and that that felt nice I that was one of the first times that I've had any kind of praise uh, over anything I guess, um, other than my parents praising me for just being a kid. Um, that's one of the earliest moments I can think of. But then there's a more definitive 
thing like when I was in high school walking into a museum and seeing Rembrandt paintings I think everyone has that experience and I just like and then walking into a museum and seeing um, someone doing a master study of a still life I remember it was, it's a, a still life with this bird and all this landscape and stuff um, but seeing this guy standing there with his unfinished painting, and I still remember it was an underpainting, it was a grisaille, and um, seeing his little uh, jar of mineral spirits, uh, or it could have been medium, but his little old worn down jar, to me it just, I kind of really fell for the materials. Um, I wanted to know what that was. It was like this magical elixir and the painting was just this magical thing that uh, that emerged. Hey, Marius. So now we're adding a darker accents for the eyelids. And I was also motivated by my teachers too. I mean, um, motivated by the people around me. I always had so much support. Um, I've had so much support with painting in terms of like encouragement from others and things until I moved. Uh, and I moved and really the only supporter uh, person that I guess uh, in person that's uh, shed some kind of positivity when I'm in the studio is, is this guy. So, um, he's, he's my, uh, studio buddy. So, um, without him, I don't even know. Um, uh, I really wasn't painting as much, I would say, um, before him. Now in terms of the painting, like I said, simple shapes are everything almost it is important again those first 13 minutes we threw all of those light shapes in there and it's not magic um, it's not magic that gets this color to work with that color um, and it's not all trickery either it's it's all fundamentals shapes of light and dark shapes of value shapes of color and um, keep the details as much as you can to a minimum and focus on the uh, relationship of all these shapes to one another. That's what's going to make uh, your painting improve. Adriana, Let's see, you wrote when you were a kid, you like to draw. Let's see, later you like to draw portraits. I started to paint with uh, oil paint only some years ago after a visit of one exhibition. And you decided to paint with oil paint. Cool. Very cool. There's going to be different motivators, I guess, for everyone, but um, any stories that you have would be cool. And thanks, Adriana, for sharing.
Now we're adding more simplicity to the eyelids by flattening out the shape of the, uh, the highlight and then putting a little more curvature. I think this guy has to use the restroom. Luckily, we have a puppy pad, so I'm gonna see if he wants to go on his puppy pad. So we will return after these messages. didn't miss much. It's from Adriana. Let's see. Oh good, I'm glad that you like my YouTube channel. Thank you, thank you. I'm glad my YouTube channel helped helped you out. Thank you, thank you. And again, with simple shapes are everything. It's also important to to mention. Oh, thanks for the the emoji. I wonder how you did that. I've never seen that before. How long do water the water oil paints take to dry? Mine have been drying pretty normal. I guess because I'm not using water. If you use water to thin it out, it takes an eternity. To dry but they do dry more slowly um, something that I've been doing actually is leaving the brushes in linseed oil uh, just regular linseed oil when I'm not painting which prevents it from drying on the ferrules it's an experiment um, I've been doing this for like I don't know like two weeks now three weeks now the brushes are okay um, they function just fine I'm using them right there I haven't cleaned that brush, uh, and this is, I don't know how many days ago, um, but typically about four days, sometimes two days, and it is touch dry. It used to take much longer with the water mixable, but that's because I didn't use um, the solvent. I didn't use, uh, I didn't use Gamsol or Spike Lavender, so, um, they dry pretty much the same as long as you don't use um, you don't use water. As I tell you that though, they do dry a little more slowly if you are just comparing the paint unaltered. So let's say cadmium red without any medium will dry. Like take a swab of it with a palette knife, put it on a canvas. Take a swab of pyrol red, put it on a canvas. The cadmium red will probably dry maybe in four days. The pyrol red maybe in six days. So there's a slight difference there. Hey, Leone, let's see, you, wrote, you wanted a hobby when you retired to keep your mind active and challenged. Started with pastel and graduated to oil paint. Now you go to class twice a week and keep learning and improving. Good, good. I'm glad. Now painting can do so many things for us. Um, it is a very uh, mental thing. There's a lot of thinking involved in it. But there's also a lot of emotion that goes into it as well. It's a nice balance. Oh, thanks, Leone. Yeah, everyone, I'm, I'm thinking of another step. I mean, I've been doing this format for a while now, uh, live streaming of pre-recorded. Um, and how many more head studies do you want to see? Well, I mean, very likely five years from now, I'm probably still going to be doing um, head studies, portrait sketches and things like that. But, but there's always a change here and there. There was one time where I did... Um, when I started, the most popular videos I did then, they're still the most popular videos, uh, were uh, all pre-recorded weekly videos, uh, one hour long, sometimes an hour and a half. 
a step-by-step -step how to do this, how to do that with portraits. Uh, I think that's what most most uh, people have watched. But it comes a time where you do so many of them that it's just kind of uh, it, you don't want to keep doing the same thing over and over again. So there's always going to be a balance. Here is where uh, the edges got a little softer uh, right around here. As you can tell, nothing was added, nothing was subtracted. The only thing that changed was this edge here, and these were softened off camera. So here, here, and here. But um, it's not a major uh, change that happened from here, here, and here. The reason it was softened off camera is it's usually kind of a tedious, boring thing um, that I've learned not to uh, to do too much with um, with the video format. So we'll go back. We'll go through everything. Like I said, the first thirteen minutes were very critical. The beginning of this painting was in incredibly important. And like I said, it's a head study, so it, there's a lot of freedom involved in it. Adriana, what about live figure painting? Uh, I do teach figure painting, but I do that on my Patreon, my online classes. The reason is I can't monetize those videos um, because there's like a nudity thing to it. And what I use is to avoid avoid nudity, I use... Um, I use um, uh, old master paintings of uh, figure paintings. Um, so that's how I can bypass using uh, pictures because you know how that can go with uh, with pictures. But that's on my online classes. There's a whole project playlist for that. Uh, but yes, I have done that. Uh, gesture drawing, um, gesture drawing with paint, gesture drawing with charcoal, uh, short-term figure painting, long-term figure painting. Uh, perspectives, all of that stuff. Anatomy, I, I have done all of that stuff. Um, but thanks for the question. All right, going back to the beginning. In the beginning, there was a blank canvas. And then there was not a blank canvas. There was black paint, red paint, which made a violet, thinned it out with a generous amount of solvent and then added a little bit of white and then spread that on the canvas to give us an active tone. Then we had the placement of the head with the silhouette. Then we had very simple blocky light and dark shapes and we'll have the finished painting next to it so you can see how it'll progress. And then we started to introduce color to the forehead and now we can Think about it like molding all these shapes together. And then, same thing, just putting all these shapes together. And this was the first 13 minutes. Like I said, here, this was the most important thing. Like I said, I blur my eyes, and these are the same things. The face is the same. I blur my eyes. This is important. Not that not the softening of it but this to be able to get from this to that involves knowing how to place your shapes down like this simple shapes work with the shapes and then you add your middle stages those middle stages of those shapes, those blocky planes. Then you add smaller planes, and then you soften some edges, get the edges nice and smooth, same step really. And that's pretty much it. Just piece together those edges and you have your uh, completed painting. And uh, but again, that's as simple as it is. Blank canvas, not blank canvas, now it's toned, placement of the head, simple shapes. Always take a look at where my brush is, right? Where is my brush there? Where is my hand? You see that? 
my hand relative to the brush? Where is my hand relative to the brush? Hand relative to the brush. Hand relative to the brush. Okay. Again, where is my hand relative to the brush? I don't know how I'm holding two brushes there, but where is my hand relative to the brushes? See that? See where I'm holding it the whole time? Even when we get, say, wait for it, here, you don't see my fingers at all. I mean, I might rest a pinky somewhere, but notice how that brush is kind of dangling in the air. That brush is allowed to move free. So what it means is I'm keeping myself an arm's length away from the canvas. The canvas, again, has to be 90 degrees, has to be vertical. Keep yourself an arm's length away. Make sure that your canvas is eye level with you, whether you're sitting or standing. I think I was standing when I painted this. Um, and that is the proper position. But again, the first 13 minutes here was uh, the, the most important thing. Uh, and this was the first 13 minutes. And that's how you do a simple uh, portrait sketch. And you ultimately get something like, uh, like, like this. And you'll see more of this kind of idea throughout all of my videos. But, but recently with this, the ability to do live stream and then uh, live stream a pre-recorded, it's nice to be able to say, um, you know, like envelope, block in, simple shapes of color, blocks of color critical stage here subdivide the shapes and then just like magic soften it and again it's not magic soften those pieces together and there you go that's how you do it uh, so let's see um, Adriana I'm glad you liked the, the video yep uh, remember everyone my online classes start at just ten dollars a month it gets you access to all the pre-recorded videos here is my schedule so it is, um, it's no mystery. Mondays, we have basic level lessons for those of you that have uh, little to no experience or really want to sharpen your fundamentals. And then Friday, we have advanced, uh, intermediate to advanced level lessons. For example, Fridays, we're doing a Caravaggio project. Um, Mondays, we just finished the still life project. Now we're gonna, uh, we're gonna do some perspective drawing uh, on Monday. Every other Wednesday, we have a live chat on Zoom. So if you want to hang out with me and, and uh, chat on Zoom. And then every Tuesday, we have something called the Virtual Classroom, which is right here, Virtual Classroom every Tuesday. And that is a video that I make and give students feedback on their artwork. So you can send me up to two images each week. It could be a class project or your own artwork um, and I give you feedback and those are the biggest things for the ten dollars a month and then in addition to that if you want to watch the videos the lessons live instead of pre-record then there's a live stream tier and then everything in blue is for the zoom tiers which is a, a tier higher up but it all starts at the ten dollars a month um, so thanks everyone I'm glad you like the portrait and the colors, Jonas. Uh, the forehead is really bright in the photo. Uh, is it then knowledge comes to make it the sphere? Yeah. It's more just my memory of knowing that the forehead turns that way instead of just making it one big bright thing. But yeah, yeah, exactly. As you mentioned, uh, Jonas. Oh, thanks, Stephanie. Thanks, Janice. Okay, so that should be about it for today. So as always, remember, I'm here every Tuesday around 10, 15 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Thank you so much for watching. As always, I wish you the very best in all of your artwork, and I'll see you 
on the next one.